you psychiatrist Does he beat around the bush? What's he prescribing you? Legs are pro, Xanax, it barely lets you function But you can at least manage a dose to dull the panic But now you never smile, the kids can't get you to play So they feel like they're on trial What's up everybody, I'm Skulls and today we're reacting to the Halo theme by Voiceplay featuring Scott Porter. So firstly, if you're new here, I found out about Voiceplay through Jeff Castellucci. A friend that's in my Discord recommended I listen to him. Uh, I did, I enjoyed him a lot, I thought he was very talented. So from there I was recommended Voiceplay in which I listened to uh, We Don't Talk About Bruno, which uh, blew me away. I thought they were all just incredibly talented and it was clear to me that everyone was just having a lot of fun with it. I don't hear a lot of acapella groups really. Just to let you guys know, I grew up on Halo. Halo was like the first game game that really made me take gaming seriously as an industry, as an art. Well, that and Ocarina of Time, those were game changers to me. Halo obviously stood out for its soundtrack. It was an amazing soundtrack. I actually have a funny story about um, uh, the day I got Halo 2 on the release. I think I was in middle school and my mother was bringing me to a dentist appointment. I had to get four of uh, my teeth removed, but it was a really sucky day. I remember getting out of that appointment and uh, that was the day Halo 2 released. And my mom told me like, we can't get it today. Um, we'll get it tomorrow. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And when we got in the car, I was all like loopy and uh, I had a bunch of gauze in my mouth, bleeding. And my mom just goes very casually, uh, can you reach in the glove compartment and get my sunglasses for me? So I go into the glove compartment and I find in there Halo 2, the special edition. She actually went and got it for me uh, before she even picked me up to go get the procedure. And that meant the world to me. I was just there smiling through the pain, just so happy. And then I went home and just played it through all the loopiness with the gauze in my mouth. I'm sure I looked ridiculous. Yeah, that's a nice little memory I have. Such a small thing just went so far for me. And that's why moms are the best. So if you have a mom, make sure you tell her you love her because uh, she's not always gonna be around and no one's gonna love you like your mom does. But yeah, anyways, yeah, very, very big fan of the series. I actually have the original Halo 2 soundtrack right here bit dirty but yeah since i've listened to the halo soundtracks that's where my love for original soundtracks came from for movies games whatever so this theme really just has a place in my heart i mean it's just so iconic but let me shut up i want to hop into this and check their rendition of it out their arrangement of it but first if you're new here consider hitting the like button the subscribe button the notification bell helps the channel grow helps the video reach more people and i appreciate it a lot but all right let's hop into the halo theme which is six minutes. Holy crap. Ooh, beautiful. Editing's nasty. <laughs> oh, that's such a cool way of doing it. Oh my god. 
<laughs> oh man. Red team. Blue team. <laughs> <laughs> Killjoy. These guys are massacring this. This is incredible. The the video. Let's let, let's jump to the video first. The video is awesome. It's very minimalistic, but the editing is perfect. The editing complements the momentum of the arrangement and the song, as well as accenting each person. It's just very well done in a clever, minimal way. And when you're doing anything, any kind of video in a minimal way, you do have to get clever in the editing room. And there's no shortage of that. I mean, they didn't have to do the plasma grenade sticking the dude with it. The bringing each person closer to the screen when they were all standing next to each other. The flashing them in and out. I also really like the liberties they're taking with it. It still has that swagger that the Halo soundtrack had. Halo's OST always had this like hip hop ish tendency where it's like displaying confidence in all the craziness. And it's part of what makes it so badass and memorable. And so the beatboxing just fits right at home with that. And if you didn't know the soundtrack, I feel like you would sort of miss out on that. But to, but to me, I would guess that they're fans of the game or at least of the soundtrack because they're capturing the spirit of the game and the soundtrack. <laughs> Nice mix up in the harmonies there. Thank you for tuning in and checking out Voice Play's version of the Halo theme. Now, some of you may ask, Voice Play, why Halo? And the answer is twofold. First and foremost, we wanted to pay homage to a game that had a tremendous impact upon our group for the better part of two decades now. And second, we wanted to pay our respects to a fallen member of our own fire team, a true Spartan in his own right, Rick Dunn. Oh. You see, 20 years ago, when voice play was in its infancy, when it was still called 4 to 5, and when Blaine and Jeff and myself were just babies, a game called Halo released. And after it did, every single one of our rehearsals ended the same way, with us huddled around a TV, playing multiplayer into the wee hours of the night. And sure, things got heated on Hang'em High because, well, only four guys could play at once, so if you were a low man on the totem pole, you had to hand off your controller and sit the next one out. But we had a blast. And when we went on tour, we would take the Xbox with us, along with six or seven adapters to plug into whatever TV that hotel might have. <laughs> Kept us out of trouble. And allowed us to play, to laugh, to connect. See, Halo connected us in play the way that music connected us in our desire to create. Our brother and longtime voice play collaborator, Rick Dunn, was another creator. He loved to play. He led the laughs, and most of all, he had a strong desire to connect through a community of artistic expression. Earlier this year, much before his time, we lost Rick, and we made a promise as a group to continue to play, to laugh, to create in his name. We urge you all to do the same. Thank you so much for listening, and Rick, Thank you for inspiring so many and connecting with us all. Kudos. See, I knew that they were fans. You can always tell when someone's work is 
inspired. And you can always tell when someone's work is phoned in. And clearly this was not phoned in. This was done out of love and out of admiration for the, uh, I guess, source material. And they should be proud. And I know their friend would be proud of them too. Masterfully done. I see what you guys mean now. Jeff's low notes. That was the lowest I think I've heard him. It makes sense it would be in the song too. I mean, it's it's a, it's a monk chant kind of song. But yeah, it felt so full. It felt so busy. Just like the original. The beatboxing was amazing. It wasn't overdone. It was done to complement everything else around it. I know with beatboxing, there's a lot of showing off and, and uh, even singing. There's a lot of showing off. There's a lot of just going up and down the scales. I mean, like, I, m I remember Maya Rudolph did a whole thing where she was, I think it was SNL, where she was singing the national anthem. And she was basically making fun of how crazy they go with the vocals so over the top. <laughs> and uh, that's honestly how a lot of uh, singers feel to me, like in the mainstream anyways. They just feel like they're just trying to do as much as possible all the time when not every idea needs that. I mean, there are ideas that call for that and it's completely appropriate. But when you're doing like a club song or something, I mean, why why would that be necessary? It just seems like overcompensation for something to me. I like bands in music that tries to follow the narrative and complement the narrative of what they're trying to do. And these guys definitely feel like that. I mean, it's an acapella group, so they get to show off like that. It's 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 part of what they do, but they don't overdo it. Like I said in the last one, they, they give each other enough room. And the fact that they bounce around and kind of lateral the ball off to each other and let everyone sh have their moment to shine is what gives them that showing off effect. Like if they took that away from each other and it was clear they were just trying to outshine each other, that wouldn't be compelling to me. It's clear to me that these guys have a respect for the art, have a respect for each other as bandmates, and have a respect for the process. And in my opinion, that's probably why they've blown up. It translates over to the viewer. But yeah, this was awesome. I knew it was gonna be great. I loved what they did in the last song, uh, We Don't Talk About Bruno. I'll definitely have to check even more out by them because I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan. But that's where I'm going to end the video, guys. I appreciate you stopping in and hanging out with me. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell. Helps the channel grow, helps the video reach more people, and I appreciate it a lot. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a good day, good night, and as always, I look forward to the next one. Peace.